Nuclear power is getting a second look in many places around the world. A primary reason for what has become known as the global nuclear renaissance is the fear that greenhouse gas emissions, mainly from burning fossil fuels, will continue to rise. This rise may likely cause significant changes to the Earth's climate. Nuclear power has a unique place in the debate about global climate change. This is because it is the only carbon-free source of energy that is already a big part of the world's energy supply. It can be made bigger with few limits. Nuclear power is one of the most globalized sectors as there is currently a significant similarity across the nuclear plans and programs of most of the world's major nuclear powers. Even though nuclear energy can be a polarizing topic due to its production and distribution cost, there is an alternative to building these big, expensive nuclear reactors worth discussing. Mini or small modular reactors. What exactly are they? What are the advantages? And do they handle the negative aspects of nuclear energy? In today's video, we unravel all there is to know about mini nuclear reactors. Sit tight till the end of this video, and you will certainly be blown away by this budding innovation. Let's dive in. No doubt, nuclear is synonymous with everything bad for most people. And it's not their fault. A few years ago, the word nuclear cajoled the thoughts of wars, mushroom clouds, and other bad things in a layman's mind. Although nuclear energy has a scary history, many people still believe it is necessary to set up a reliable, carbon-free energy source. Since 1954, when the first nuclear power plant was hooked up to the Soviet power grid, the world has been making nuclear energy. Researchers have been on their boards trying to make it more affordable. We love to think of nuclear energy as a stable, low-carbon energy source that can back up intermittent renewable energy sources like wind and solar. Some countries, like Hungary, Slovakia, and France, get their electricity from nuclear power. In 2019, more than 10% of all the electricity made in the world came from nuclear power. In the past, though, that number was higher. In 1996, nearly 18% of the world's electricity came from nuclear power. Only 2-3 to three gigawatt of new nuclear power came online in 2019, while 97-98 to 98 gigawatt of solar PV and 59-59.5 to 59 .5 gigawatt of wind power came online. So, what happened to cause that big drop? And why doesn't the world use more nuclear power? People were scared of nuclear energy after the big disasters at Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, and more recently, Fukushima. These events obviously slowed the growth of the industry. But the safety risk and nuclear waste aren't the only reasons why investors and governments have little or almost no interest in nuclear energy. Renewable energy sources only work sometimes, so they must be backed up by quick and flexible energy sources. Nuclear power plants could be a low-carbon and stable solution to this problem. However, they are hard to build, cost a lot, and usually take about five to seven years with some major delays. How long it takes depends on the project. Still, one report said that a new nuclear power plant in the U.S. would cost about $5,950 per kilowatt. On the other hand, natural gas generators installed in 2018 cost an average of $850 per kilowatt and take about 24 months to build. So you can see why utilities like natural gas power plant more, even though they aren't as good for the environment as nuclear. As recorded by the World Nuclear Industry Status Report two years ago, Nuclear power's levelized energy cost went up from about $117 per megawatt hour in 2015 to $155 in 2019. On the other hand, wind and solar had LCOEs of $41 per megawatt hour and $40 per megawatt hour, respectively. The report showed that the most interesting thing about these sensations is that the costs of renewable energy keep going down because of small improvements in manufacturing and installation, while the costs of nuclear energy keep going up. Even though the industry has been around for over 50 years, the nuclear industry needs a way out, something that will make it more profitable, shorten the time it takes to build, and still meet all the necessary safety standards. The only way out of this situation has been to put money into new reactor technology, the cost and time of building a mini nuclear reactor are expected to go down, and safety is expected to improve. Many people think they could be the tomorrow of nuclear power, but what are mini nuclear reactors? Let's discuss mini nuclear reactors or small modular reactors without wasting more time. Small modular reactors, also called mini nuclear reactors, are much smaller than regular sized reactors, which are very big. This means that they can be built more quickly and safely in factories and then shipped to the site where they will be installed. But what does small mean? 
Well, they are small enough to fit in trucks and shipping containers. Unlike conventional large-scale nuclear reactors, which have to be built on-site and have unique designs, SMRs can be made in factories and have standard designs. This means that the construction of nuclear power plants can be scaled up, costs can be cut, and there is less chance of delays. What are mini nuclear reactors? Mini nuclear reactors, or advanced small modular reactors, are ordinarily nuclear reactors with a power output of 300 megawatt electric or less. They are made with modular technology and built in a factory to lower costs and speed up construction. SMRs are made away from the site and then brought there to be put together. This means there is less construction on-site, nuclear security is improved, and containment works better. They are a better way to get around the financial problems that make it hard to make conventional nuclear reactors. Like conventional nuclear reactors, they can provide a carbon-free, clean energy alternative to fossil fuels. How does a small modular reactor work? These types of reactors now derive their energy from nuclear fission, the process by which the nucleus of an atom separates into two or more smaller, lighter nuclei is known as nuclear fission. The atom's disintegration releases vast amounts of energy as heat and radiation. This results in a chain reaction that must be maintained to generate nuclear power. Thermal neutron reactors and fast neutron reactors are among the designs. The difference between the two is the neutron's flow velocity. Thermal neutron reactors rely on a moderator to slow the neutron's velocity and uranium as the primary fissile material. In place of moderators, fast neutron reactors rely on the ability of the nuclear fuel to absorb neutrons traveling at greater speeds. Typically, fissile material in fast neutron reactors is plutonium. The majority of nuclear reactors now in operation employ the thermal neutron technique. Small modular reactors, like conventional nuclear reactors, use thermal energy to create electricity. For instance, thermal energy transforms water into steam, which then drives a turbine to generate electricity. Reactor Island is home to all nuclear systems. The reactor core, steam generators, and associated safety systems are all contained within a separate containment building. Energy Strategies for the Healthy Environment Alliance of Utah Analysis in 2019 showed that the LCOE of SMR could be anywhere from $46 per megawatt hour to $90.05 per megawatt hour, even though there was a lot of uncertainty about how much resources would cost. Natural gas, the biggest competitor to nuclear power, had an LCOE of $45.06 per megawatt hour. Critics of nuclear power also say that the issue of what to do with radioactive wreckage with a long half-life is still not solved. SMRs that use a pressurized water reactor will still make highly radioactive fuel, and no country has come up with a permanent way to store it safely. The president of the CCNR, Canadian Coalition for Nuclear Responsibility, Dr. Gordon Edwards, said that the used radioactive fuel from the new SMR reactors will still need to be stored safely for hundreds of thousands of years. That might make you feel a little down about the whole process. The IAEA, International Atomic Energy Agency, also said that dealing with spent fuel and radioactive waste from small modular reactors could be one of the most significant things to consider when choosing this technology, along with making sure there will always be enough fuel. Even though there are problems, supporters of SMR see it as a way to make nuclear power more cost-effective, safe, and competitive with other fast-response power sources to make up for the fact that wind and solar power are becoming less reliable sources of power. They may be right, but there are still questions about SMR technology that need to be answered and problems with nuclear power in general that need to be fixed before this carbon-free energy source can be seen as a good choice for the whole world. That's all on Mini Nuclear Reactors Explained. What do you think? Would scientists eventually find their way around making this innovation work? Would you switch your energy source to nuclear once the mini nuclear reactor is cleared? Let us in on your thoughts and doubts in the comment section below. If this video is insightful, please go on and like this video. Remember to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell button for more updates.